Hey everyone, Lady Sapphire here. So today I want to have some fun because tomorrow's Halloween and I love Halloween as a pagan girl. Halloween's kind of a big deal. So I want to talk about love and sexuality in the pagan culture and clear up many of the misconceptions that people have of the culture. So I really hope you enjoy this today. If you are very religious, I apologize that this might not be up your alley, but I do recommend you watch it anyway, just because I am clearing up some of those misconceptions that people have of the culture. And maybe I can encourage you to befriend one and maybe just open up your mind a little. All right, so without further ado, as always, I hope you enjoy my video, and here we go. So before I get into this, like and subscribe if you want to support me. As always, my Twitter is also there. You can follow me there. I put all my new videos there, so it's a great way to get notified that I'm posting videos. Um, also, ring the bell if you want to be notified through YouTube. Sometimes just subscribing doesn't do the trick. So if you want to keep up to date with my fun little videos here, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell. Okay, so paganism. Now, I know there are a lot of people who think with pagans that they're just in the woods fornicating with all sorts of things and doing all sorts of weird things. And that's just not true. It just isn't factual to how most true pagans live their lives. So I really want to start there with the sex rituals, as people call them. And a lot of them are more about reaching goals through sexual energies. And one of the things I really want to just get out there with this is it is most commonly done with long-term couples. It is not something that's super effective with random people. So when we're talking about these kind of rituals, it's typically couples. It's not people fornicating with random other people in the woods. These are long-standing people who have been working together with their magic for a long time. And really quickly on the magic front, what I refer to as magic is energy movement, energy flow, and how it can lead us to the goals that we want. I'm not talking sparklies coming out of my hands. No, that, that's not what's being referred to, especially where sex magic is involved. And a lot of the time it's done in harmless manners of adding different things to your tea to help encourage blood flow and doing different things to help you with your libido and increasing your estrogen or testosterone levels. Either case, it, it, that's more what it's about in a real context than actual magic. So I really wanted to just clarify that really quickly. Anyway, moving on. So another really important thing that I really want to get out there is 99% of pagans are completely inclusive to the LGBT, including issues with gender, with non-binary, other things like that. We as a normal culture don't really care about people's sexuality or gender. Not that it's not an important issue, but because it's not important on a cultural or socio like sociological level. In means of who you love or how you dress does not affect what kind of person you are. You are either a good person or a bad person. And it's not ever that clear. I mean, most people fall into the grays. But there is no, oh, because you are this, you must be bad. That doesn't exist. That concept is not relevant in historical paganism or modern paganism. They're very inclusive. There are actually a lot of myths wrapped around bisexual people and transgendered people where it was literally a, either for a bisexual, you were a person who was blessed with two souls, which is something that continued in Hindu cultures and certain African cultures. I'm not entirely sure of all the details, but I do know it's been mentioned there as well, that there's this idea that when you're a bisexual person, the reason you're attracted to both genders is because you happen to be 
two souls of opposing genders at once. Do I believe that necessarily? No, I do believe we've moved past that through psychological understanding and through the evaluation of the human brain. We've definitely gone to a different point in understanding that people are just wired differently. It's, it's just the way that life is. We're all wired a little bit differently and some people are more towards the lesbianism and gay and homosexuality in general. Some people are straight. Some people fall into the spectrum in between. Sexuality is fluid. It's never a solid thing. Which brings me to my next point of sexuality and paganism, which is it's all about the joy. So when we're just talking about basic sexual liberation, it isn't about control, power, any of those things. That's, that's not what sex is about. Now granted, if you're someone who falls into a kink where that's your thing, that's a completely different topic of conversation. But on a whole, on an average, sex is supposed to be for joy and for a good time, for fun. And even back in historical paganism, prevention measures were allowed. Like things like um, chemical abortion was allowed. Back, even all the way back then, they were using herbs much like we do today. We synthesize them and create different things, but we're basing that off of the old science of understanding what these chemicals and what these plants, for example, do to the human body. And one of these cool things that certain plants do is induce miscarriages. It's not something that I recommend you just go and do, but back in historical times, they were still encouraging that if you knew you could not take care of that child and you knew that you couldn't do, that's okay. There's no shame and you just can't do and you're not in a situation to deal with. That's okay. There's no harm, no foul. All right, so got that out of the way. Most are pro-choice and pro-choice, I really want to make this clear on my personal stance. Pro-choice does not mean that I think that we should use any kind of abortion procedure as preventative measures. I really don't. I'm only referring to that in means of back in historical paganistic times, they didn't have a means of surgically removing like we do now. It wasn't the same thing. They believed that if you in, in, try to induce it with herbs and it didn't work, then that baby was meant to be. That's just the way it was meant to be for whatever reason. So I'm just talking about it in reference to that that time there weren't things like effective condoms or effective birth control these days we have those things so i really don't think we should be encouraging girls to just go get rid of their mistake i really think we need to be encouraging all genders to be effective in how they prevent the problem if you can't handle being a parent use condoms use birth control it is there for a reason because our society cannot handle everyone having kids that they can't that they can't deal with. It, it's just not efficient to our society. So, okay, I'm done my little rant. Now back to the fun stuff. I want to get into um, initiation and these weird misconceptions that cults have created around paganism. And it, the reason I'm putting it that way is there are many different cults and different religions that are based similarly to paganism, but go off on a whole different tangent that have nothing to do with. Much like Christianity and every other religion has weird blowback. Pagans have had it too. So when you are going into some situations like sex rituals, if anyone ever tries to force you into doing something you're not comfortable with, then they are not true to their practice. There is no time when it should be forced upon you, when anything should be forced upon you, because it all goes back to the same basics that sex is for joy. It is for the joy of a couple, for the joy of whatever the situation might be, that is what it is for. So there is no 
oh, we're going to force you into doing something, or if you want to be a part of our group, you have to do blank. That is not accurate to the actual situation. That is just a cult trying to bring you into something that you are not at all prepared for, no matter how much you've studied paganism. You just, you're not ready for that. <laughs> Nobody is, unless you're a special kind of crazy. And then I wish you luck with your cult life. But otherwise, moving forward into the actual issue, it's that there are rituals that do include different things, like a coven might get together and a couple from within the coven might do something with the coven around. So it wouldn't be, oh, you're being pulled into a very strange orgy. It would be something along the lines of there's a circle, they're chanting about whatever. Usually if we're bringing that many people into it, it's something more serious, like they're looking to get pregnant and they can't, or they're trying to do something more, uh, more large scale than just get excited as a tea or different things might do and different candles and different things might do. It, it, it's getting into more extreme things. This does happen, but it would be a circle around and the couple's having fun in the middle. There, there shouldn't be anyone being pulled in or any awkward for situations and everything should be based on consent as all sexuality of any kind should be. It's based upon consent. You should not be forced to sit there and watch it. You should be fully informed before you get in that circle what is happening and what you're doing because when it comes to magics it's all about intent. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do anything. It's just safer that way. All right. So just just don't force people into things. Don't think that you need to do something to be part of somebody's circle. If they're forcing you to do something you don't want to do, get out of there. They're not your friends if they're trying to force you into things. They, they are not people for you if they're trying to put you into something that you're uncomfortable with. So just keep that in mind. That that Don't let that mar your idea of pagans as a whole if you've had a bad experience this way. And I'm sorry if you've had a bad experience this way. I truly, truly am. I don't think anyone deserves to be put through a situation that they don't, they don't feel comfortable with. So if you are dealing with that, I please, please get out of that situation and just, just move on from that because no one deserves that. I don't care what you think. No one deserves that. Um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind that that's not about paganism. Paganism is not in an encouragement to go and tell people that you have to sleep with someone or you have to do whatever. It's not true. And this also comes down to if you have a teacher. And what I mean by teacher is when you get into paganism, a lot of people don't really understand it yet. So you end up with um, different levels. And if you get into historical paganism, there were levels to how enlightened you were, basically. It's if you are super in tune with the universe and you're super understanding, then you're put up in the top. If you are still a learner who doesn't really know what's going on, you don't know how to speak to the universe yet, then you're down here at the bottom. And there's uh, there's layers in between, but I'm just going to keep this simple. If you are someone who is a little bit lower than somebody else, it is not expected of you to do anything sexual with that higher up person. That That is not how this works. Because the fact is, if we're talking about sexual magics, then you want someone at the same level as you to be effective in your magic. So if they're trying to trick you as someone who you know you're not at the same level as them, but they're trying to pull you to them for whatever weird twisted reason, that is not okay. That is not even a, like even supported under any paganism doctrines, which I mean, there's doctrines of, is a strong word. There's a lot of writings about many sides of it, many different interpretations of what it really means. Um, I, for example, am a, am a karmatic pagan, which means I do believe in karma. I do believe that what we do has consequences and responses. I'm not a hundred percent sold on the theist aspects of it with the many gods or even one god. I, I don't really believe in that. Just because 
we now are at a point in science where we don't need to fill in blanks with gods. And what I mean by that is, in the pagan world, all the way back before we had modern science, they didn't understand what causes floods, what causes volcanoes to erupt, what causes tornadoes. None of this was known. So they had to fill in these blanks. They had to kind of go with, well, if it's flooding, we must have angered this god. If it's hailing, we must have angered that god. And this is something we see every culture do, because there is a power to religion in societies. No matter what the religion is, there's a power to a whole society coming together under one religious practice. It has more to do with control of society, and maintaining of laws and regulations, but there is a use for it. And that's why the governments use it. There is a use for it in keeping people in line a little bit. When you're talking about barbaric humans like we are, like humans have put ourselves on screens and we hide behind our phones, but you look at some of those chats and some of the comments and we're just as barbaric as we were back then. So there is a power sociologically to a religion and to gods and the understanding that there's something higher watching you that will punish you if you don't do what you're supposed to. There's definitely a power to that. But I don't see it as relevant in today's society in the same way as it was because now we do have a much grander understanding of laws and regulations. Our, our systems are completely different than they were back then. So I, I really don't see the same need for it in the same way. So when it comes to like the gods and that kind of stuff, I'm not sold on it. I am, however, sold on energy. We know for a fact that every human contains so much electricity and that when we come into contact with certain chemicals, we get certain responses. And with nature especially, we actually get a chemical reaction from trees. We go out, we walk in the trees, we feel calm, we feel exuberant, we feel happy. And it's literally because there's chemicals being released by almost every species of tree that makes us feel that way. It's literally what they base the happening, the terrible, scary movie on, was that we are, in fact, being affected by chemicals all around us all the time. And I can wrap my brain around that scientifically, which is why I've been always pulled towards the natural religions more than the theist religions. But anyway, that's enough about me on this little tyrant. The last thing I really want to talk about is marriage. Marriage and the difference between what we think of as marriage today and what marriage was back then and some of the misconceptions that we have about the hand fasting and the hand not tying ceremonies because we we tend to think of them as like barbaric ceremonies where oh well like hand fasting oh you just gotta say you like that person you can go live with them forever yeah yeah but that's not the truth in reality if you look into how hand fasting and the knot tying ceremonies worked, you had to do both if you wanted to be with your partner forever. It wasn't just one or the other. And it's very similar to what we would think about these days as engagement and marriage. So when we're talking about the hand fasting, and I know a lot of people, the other misconceptions, they think it's the same thing. They think hand fasting and knot tying are the exact same thing, and they're not. So when we're talking about the hand fasting ceremonies, we're actually talking about what would be like an engagement today. It would be a couple would get together, they would marry, or they would stay together for a while. They would not marry, sorry, ignore that. They would get together, they would live together for about a year. They had up to a year to decide if they got along, if they wanted to live together, if they were even compatible as a couple. They had that year to solve it. And then if they couldn't make it work, you went separate ways. And what I think is really interesting about this culture versus what we do today, still do today, is that I love that the pagans didn't blacklist people. And what I mean by that is that it wasn't like, oh, that girl was living with that guy for a year. She had a baby with him. 
She's no good no more. She's used luggage. She's done for. She's not good enough to be a what, which is not the case. And I love that Pagans didn't do this. What they did was, if it didn't work, you accepted that the two people were just not compatible in whatever way, and they chose to go their separate ways. And another person could come along in their lives and make them happy. That woman could easily find another husband material guy. Whether she had children, whether she lived with another person, it was irrelevant. She was still a good woman. There was a clear understanding that good people can be in bad relationships together, which is just reality. It's just the way that things are. And I loved that all the way back then, They'd grasp this understanding of humanism that we are just struggling to get back to now. And, and I think it's so fascinating. The next part of the ceremony aspect, if you went the year, you decided you loved each other, you really wanted to make it work, you'd move on to the knot tying ceremony. Now, the knot tying ceremony would not have fancy rings and all these things. It was literally a cord or a ribbon would be tied around either one of each or both hands of the partners and they would be bound through the energy that came through the cords. And then once it was done, the ribbon or cord, which would be made of two pieces, would be untied and each section, each person would get a half of the cord and it would be tied around their necks. And that was a symbol that they always carried each other's energies over their hearts. And I think that's beautiful. The other big difference, this is a big difference, it doesn't seem like a big difference, but it's a huge difference, is the vow aspect. So we know modern marriage, the woman honors and obeys, the man loves and protects, and that's pretty much all there is. There's more of the in sickness and health and in sick in health and wealth and poorness and different things like that but the general feel is in a modern marriage women are subservient to men your job is to obey him no matter what you listen to him you let him be your guide while he makes sure that you have food and no other man touches you but in the pagan world, you both honor each other. You both vow to love, protect, and value each other, and to be positive lights in each other's lives. And that is wonderful. It's this perfect harmony of men and women. And I say this because I am getting very general in the typical marriage of men and women. Though, as I said, pagans, we were pro-choice in many ways. All the way back then, men and men could marry, women and women could marry. It wasn't a big deal. They could live together. They could be happy together. And it was fine. But in this context that neither gender has to promise to be subservient to the other. You both have to be subservient to each other. You both have to be honoring and protective of each other. And I love that it ensures that women and men are of equal stature in their marriage, which makes such a huge difference. Could you imagine how life would be if we had kept these things going and didn't have the revolution of women, you nothing, you get on the floor and start scrubbing and then you start sucking because that's just what we're good for. I'm sorry that was vulgar, but that is just how it seems today because of the Christian movement that swarmed the world. We lost some of these things that we had back then. It's not new. The ideas of equal life and of common values is not new. It's something that we, we mastered years ago and then lost. And I'm so glad that it's something that we can now proclaim in a more common way that we're embracing these values again, that they're coming back again, because it's the way the world needs to be for success. Like women and men need to come together and work together. Which brings me to my final point, 
and this is going to be a positive, happy one, is that there is no power struggle between men and women in the pagan world. It, it doesn't exist. It, it's, yes, women might be better with certain things and men might be better with certain things, but that doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It just means that we have to utilize each other's strengths and weaknesses. We have to bring together those forces for good and for a positive movement of the world. It, it's not rocket science that we need to take time to figure these things out and actually learn to work as a team. As humans, we are social creatures. We need to all work together. If we don't, we don't progress, which is why we've had so much trouble progressing until about a hundred years ago. It wasn't until the early 1900s that we were finally able to move forward in a lot of scientific and technological ways that have opened the door for us to have these kind of conversations and to discuss these kinds of problems in a real way. And I really hope we can keep that going because eventually I would love to see a world where I don't care what religion you practice, just be kind to each other. I don't care if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're a trans man or woman, I don't care if you're non-binary. I really don't. I don't care where you fall into the gender spectrum, the sexuality spectrum. I just wish we could all just be happy and just live life without really caring about it. Because the more that we all get wrapped up caring about it, the more that it turns into a problem, the more that it turns into a point of contention. As long as someone is sitting there going, I have the right to blank, and someone else is going, but my Bible says you don't, we'll never get anywhere. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to end this here because I could go on forever on the the gender issues and I don't even mean like issues like the transit or anything like that as an issue. I mean like just conformity and just gender positivity. I, I could get into that forever so I'm not going to do that today but <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video anyway. Like and subscribe below if you want to support me. Ring the little bell if you want to be notified. Or follow me on Twitter where you can see my videos are posted every week. So hope you enjoyed this and have a good night guys. Bye!